Okay, so my Stefan user has a administrator access policy, so I should be able to do whatever I want on the right-hand side. So if I go back to the IAM console and maybe try to see all the users created, so I can see right here that, yes, I have access to the users, and can I create a group, for example? I'm going to create a new group and call it developers. Click on next step, next step, create group. And yes, I'm able to do some of that. So this is great. But I want to show you the effect of permissions. So I'm going to go back into my group on my root account, click on admin, and I'm going to remove, for example, the user from the group. So I'm going to remove this user from the group. And now the user, if you look at it, if we look at the Stefan user, does not have any permission policies. So that means that I just unauthorize myself on the right hand side to do anything I wanted. So let's click on users, for example. And then I'm going to refresh this page and see what happens. So now it says you need permissions. So I do not currently have the permissions to perform an IAM list users on this. So this means that I need this very, very specific permission to view the users. So we can add it, for example, if we go to users and we can add permissions directly to a user, for example, just to try it out. So I'm going to add some permissions to me. So I'm going to say attach existing policies directly, and I'm going to type IAM. And here we can have, for example, an IAM read only access, which should go only give my user access to see what's in IAM, but not change anything. So I'll click on review. I gave myself an IAM read only access, and I added my permissions. And now if I go back to this page and refresh, and refresh actually the entire page, this should work a lot better. Now we can see that I can list my users and I can list my groups. But can I create a group? Let's try to create an operations group. I'll click on next step, next step, create group. And it says, again, we cannot process your request because you're not authorized to perform I am create group. So we really see the impact of permissions right here, just in the beginning. So obviously I wanna be able to complete my tutorial. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give back my user full admin permissions. For this, I'm gonna go into the admin group and add my Stefan user back into the group. And this should make it inherit the administrator policy. And then finally, into users Stefan, I can detach directly this policy that I attached from before because we don't need it anymore. We already have administrator access from the group. Finally, we've been using policies, but let's have a look at what they mean. So on the left hand side, if I click on policies, I can see all the policies that exist that can be either managed by AWS or linked to jump function, or we can create our own policy. So let's have a look at a few policies we've been using so far. So we have administrator access, and we also had IM read policy, so read only access, here we go. So if we look at the administrator access, and we look at the policy summary, we can see it allows 230 out of 230 services. But if we look at the JSON form of it, which is how they are created in the first place, we can see it is a very simple JSON statement. You don't need to know how to write it, but it's good to know how to read it. So the statement says that the effect is allow on action star, so that means any action, and the resource star, that means any resource. So this effectively allows us to do anything on everything, hence the name of administrator access. Now, if we look at another one, for example, if we look at I am read only access, and we can see the only service allowed now is I am one service out of 230, and we have different level of access, full of list limited read. So if we look at the JSON document now, we can see it is a lot more specific and the effect is to allow. The resource is star, so that means we allow on anything. And the actions, the API calls we can do. So as we can see, we can do, for example, I am get star, so get user, etc., get policy, etc. I am list star, so list users, list policy, and then a few other actions in here. So this will effectively allow us to read whatever is in IAM because usually the API calls that start with reads are get star and list star, for example, get user or list users. Finally, you could go ahead and create your own policy. So if you wanted to create your own policy, this is out of scope for the exam, but you have either a visual editor where you choose a service that would work for you. So we can say IAM in here, and then once we've done IAM, we can choose the API calls we are allowing. So for example, we can do in the list, we can choose, for example, list policies and list users, okay? 
and then we choose the resources and the conditions. And what this will do is that effectively, this will create a JSON document right here that we can use and that is equivalent to the visual editor. So you can either just type in a JSON document or you could use the visual editor, which can be very, very friendly. So that's it. We've seen how policies work, how they're created, how they're assigned and the power of the permissions. So I hope you like this lecture and I will see you in the next lecture.